<sighs> All right. Now, it's been a while since I've made a technical video and I felt like I need to prove to you guys that I still got it and I'm not that old yet. So today we're gonna to be going over Java streams. Now, these were introduced back with the introduction of Java 8 about five or six years ago, but I didn't start looking into them until very recently. And honestly, I was pretty blown away by how powerful they are. So my name is Sam. This is the Keep On Coding channel. Let's get into it. So Java Streams gives us a set of functions that we can perform on certain data structures. They allow us to quickly and conveniently perform bulk operations on them. One thing to note is that streams themselves are not data structures and they don't modify the underlying data structure they're operating on. So how would this work? So say for example, we have a list of people and we want to retrieve all the people who are female. What we could do is we can loop through the entire list check every single person and then return them. What streams allow you to do is you simply give it the list, you give it what you want it to filter on, and it does all the heavy lifting for you and then nicely returns the list back to you. So in a way, streams streamline the process for you. See what I did there? All right, so I've talked the talk. Now it's time for me to walk the walk. Let's do a real coding example. So if we look at the code here, we see that uh, initially we've created a class called person which has a name and the amount of billions of dollars they have. And secondly, we have a constructor here so we can easily create objects of this type. Up here, we created a list that takes in the type person and we added four people to that list. So say we wanna do something where we are filtering out everyone that has a hundred or more billion dollars. So we first create a new list that can hold these people. Then we can loop through each person in that list. And then we can do our check here. So if p.billions is greater than or equal to 100, we add it to our 100 club list. So now let's go ahead and print out this 100 club list. So now if we go ahead and run that, we see that we get the three names that we were expecting. Now, this obviously works, but like I was saying, we're doing all the heavy lifting here. What we can do is we can utilize streams to uh, basically do that for us. So if we go ahead and just comment all this out, this is how the syntax is gonna look. So we type in the list that we want to filter. We do dot stream dot and now we have access to everything that we can do with streams so it's not just filtering uh, we can do we can do filters we can sort a list um, we can do something where we check um, you know we can pass something in and we can say is there a match here and it returns a true or false um, so there's a lot of stuff that we're going to do here for now we're just going to do filters so we do filter now we need to use this syntax we want it to loop through each person then we use this arrow notation here, and now we do what we want it to filter on. So we're gonna say if person.billions is greater than or equal to 100. And let's go ahead and format this a little bit nicer. So what we want this to do is to return a new list. So how we do that is we do dot collect, and inside of that we type collectors.toList. And what this does is this whole thing now returns a list. So what we can do here is we can copy this and set this whole thing equal to this list. And we need to go ahead and delete this part here. So now if we go ahead and print out 100 club, we see that we get the exact same results. Yet the streams did everything for us. We didn't actually have to manually loop through the entire list. Um, so as you can see that streams are very convenient and very powerful. So this filters everything from a list, but we can do a lot more with streams. Uh, let's try and use the sorted function. So let's go ahead and comment everything out. So say we want to just sort all the names alphabetically. This is gonna look very similar to before. We just do people.stream. Now we do dot and we go down to sorted. 
Now the syntax for this is gonna be a little bit different. Um, since we are sorting on an object, we need to tell it what we wanna sort on. So we can use a comparator to do that. So how this would look like is just simply comparator.comparing, and then we're gonna use that same arrow notation as before. And then finally, we just go ahead and call the collect function and we're done. So if we go ahead and run that, we see that it does print out everything in the list and it now it is sorted in alphabetical order. So once you get used to and more comfortable with this type of syntax, it makes life a lot easier. And doing things the old way, like having a for loop just seems very primitive. Now, one thing you might be asking yourself is what if I want to, you know, what if I want to filter a list and then sort it? Do I have to, you know, filter, create a new list and pass that list to sort it? And as you can guess, the answer is no. What we can do is we can chain our stream methods. So what we can do is we can go back to this hundred club here that we filtered. We can uncomment that. And at this point, we can just chain the methods. So if we go up here and we copy sorted. So after we filter, we can go down here and we can call sorted. So what it does is it filters it and it takes the output list to that and passes it into sorted. Then it takes that list and basically returns it. So if we change the name here to 100 sorted club and we go ahead and comment everything out and then just print out this list. If we change this to 100 sorted club, if we go ahead and run that, we see that we get those three people that had over a hundred billion and now it's in sorted order. All right, so as you can see, Java streams are a very powerful library. Now they might not always be what you need, but it's always good to keep adding tools inside of your toolbox just in case. And if you are a Java developer, I challenge you to try and incorporate this into your code if need be. But if you guys did enjoy the video, I'd really appreciate it if you guys smash that like button and sub to the channel. But thank you guys so much for watching and happy coding. I guess I'll end the video with that saying. <laughs>